Let's take a look at a simple hypothesis test example. So in this case, let's suppose that we have uh, 10 data points from a random sample from a normal population with mean mu and a known variance equal to 1. And we'll consider the hypotheses that mu is equal to 0 or that mu is greater than 0. So the null hypothesis, the default state, is that um, this mean is equal to 0, and the alternative is that for some reason it's greater. Now, the first question asks to write down an appropriate test statistic for this test. Well, at this point in the course, we don't have really a systematic way of coming up with test statistics. And given that it's the end of the semester, we probably won't study a systematic way. And right now, we're just going to work with our intuition. And intuition says something about uh, if this is a test about the mean, then it might make sense to use x bar as a test statistic. But even better, it might make sense to use uh, the standardized version. So z being equal to x bar minus mu over sigma over the square root of n. And the reason why this might be better is because we know the distribution here is standard normal. And the standard normal distribution is symmetric around 0, so certain uh, computations might become easier and uh, we will know how to calculate this so you might say well if I just have data how would I calculate something with population parameters in it well remember first Sigma is known so it's one so we can easily compute the denominator the numerator X bar we get from the data but in hypothesis testing we calculate the test statistic under the null hypothesis and so under the null hypothesis, we know what mu is. So we would know how to compute this test statistic, given some set of data. So that should help us uh, with number two, which is to sketch the distribution of the test statistic under the null hypothesis. Well, if we choose z as our test statistic, which I think is a better choice just practically over x bar, if we choose z, then we know z has a standard normal distribution under the null hypothesis. So it'll be centered at 0 and uh, with variance 1. So I've, uh, I've plotted that here. So this here is uh, our test statistic z, right? This is the distribution of z. So for question number three, if we fix alpha, the size of the test, to be 5%, let's try to sketch the region, uh, the rejection region for the test. So the rejection region will be the region uh, where we, if we computed our test statistic and the test statistic fell in this region, we would reject the null hypothesis. Uh, so we would have to figure out the boundary for the rejection region and then, you know, highlight beyond that boundary, that would be the rejection region. So in order to find the boundary, we need a critical value. And the critical value we can get from knowing that this is an upper-tailed test, meaning uh, we are rejecting when mu is greater than zero, and the fact that we have a test of size alpha. So we're looking for z alpha, which is z of 0 0.05, which is about 1.64. And visually, if we go back to our plot, we'll see that the rejection region will be from 1.64, so maybe roughly here. Uh, so from 1.64 and beyond. So I'll highlight this here as the rejection region. Well, for part four, uh, if we suppose the true mean in the population is two, let's sketch the distribution of the test statistic under that alternative hypothesis. Well, that's the gold curve here. So this curve here is the test statistic uh, computed under the alternative that mu is equal to two. Now, assuming the alternative from part four, so assuming that the mean is actually two, 
uh, let's sketch the region on which one would make a type 2 error. So remember, type 2 errors are made under the assumption of some alternative, in this case, mu equal to 2. So we would calculate the probability of a type 2 error using the gold curve and not the black curve. So making a type 2 error means that we hold on to the null hypothesis. We fail to reject the null, but the alternative is true. So think about when we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. That would be if we don't fall in the rejection region. So if our test statistic were, say, here or anywhere, basically below 1.64, we would fail to reject the null. And if we wanted to find the probability of that happening under this alternative, we would need to compute the area under the curve, the gold curve that is, and below 1.64. So I, I'm going a little bit below zero here. Of course, you wouldn't do that to compute this area. So it would be this shaded area here. So that would be the probability of type 2 error.